Howdy everyone, Andy Reiner here. I'm hanging out in Colorado today working on my intonation on my five string violin. <laughs> Y'all. Yeah. So hopefully wherever you are, you're also holding a string instrument or maybe you're holding a tuba, that's fine too. We're still gonna practice intonation. I've set up a drone, a drone here on a looping pedal, just playing some low notes, really long notes, trying to get a nice D vibe happening. And uh, so we're gonna start with the scale. And what we're looking for is tuning our fingers until we hear the intonation become really amazing. Uh, there's a huge difference between being in tune and out of tune. And you can hear it when you play these two notes at the same time. Like, here's my A on my D string. Here's my open A. really hear the sound of being in tune versus being out of tune very clearly there. So when I played against the drone, when I'm playing my scale, I really want to get it super in tune. So I'm not going to rush to the next note, I'm just going to tune the note until it sounds really good. It's a little bit harder to get in tune, but we can do it. I know you think you can play a D, but can you really play a D? Okay, you have 40 seconds to do that without me. One, two, three, go. Also a nice time to work on those bow changes. Keep that bow really parallel to the bridge. Cool, well done. Now, we're gonna play an arpeggio. I'm just gonna keep it one octave, because that's a little bit easier. But when you do this later on your own, in addition to this video, you could do as many octaves as you want and in any key you want. So. If you're telling me, oh, Andy, I could play a D arpeggio, that's easy. Cool. Can you play a four octave D arpeggio? Can you use the seventh? There are levels here. Anyway, here's my one octave D arpeggio. Not in a rush, just trying to get it in tune. Your turn. Very nice. Okay, now we're to the super fun part. This is where we change the order of the scale, and we're going to play whatever we want. There's no mistakes, but I'm going to try to stay within the D major scale, and I'm going to use rests. Rests do not play themselves, you have to play them. So play a couple notes, and then play a rest. 
Imagine you're a wind player and you ran out of breath. Stop moving your bow. Play a rest. Five seconds. Ready? Go. that feel if it felt good do it again later on with some real um cello drones and they'll play for five minutes and not end after 45 seconds cool so now you're gonna go and play some kind of piece of repertoire that you're working on that happens to be in the same key i was just working with a student on a fiddle tune called midnight on the water so i'm gonna play that now and uh if you know it feel free to play along and if you don't know it, feel free to play along, see if you can figure it out. rather practice playing in D to a drone than just be in a room by myself being like am I in tune I don't know so listen guys and gals and anybody listen to your intonation move your finger when it needs to be moved even if it just takes one little wiggle so you're working on other pieces of music right now. Pick the right key that you need to practice in. The thing that's gonna get you good at playing in that key is by spending time in it. So hang out with those cello drones, because cellos are the best, and spend some time not rushing to the next note, just getting your intonation there. I promise you it's gonna be awesome. And when you especially use that third step, change the order, and use rests, you're really going to get to know it in a different way than if you were just playing scales and hoping that your music gets better. So, anyway, it's been cool to hang out with you for this moment. Uh, feel free to check out my music at andyreiner.com. I am the Skiing Fiddler. And if you want more from me, subscribe down below my YouTube channel, which is Fiddling Skier. And, um, yeah, check out my podcast, River of Suck. Have an awesome day.
keep playing those strings. Thank you.